All right, let me show you how to auto-generate 10,000 characters or whatever amount of characters you want to generate using nft-generator.art. So let's first break down uh, Crunchy Cow. This is the artwork in the NFT series that I'm working on, and I used NFT Generator to build these cows. So this video assumes you already have your artwork done. I'm going to walk through this really quickly. I'm not going to design anything in this video, so maybe I'll create another video on that and make that as a part one. I created all of these characters in Procreate and I made one Procreate file for each design element. So I'll first show you, this is the full Crunchy Cow auto-generated. You can see the foreground has the food element, then the next step is gonna be the clothing, and then there's gonna be a nose, a mouth, and what you don't see here is there's nose rings, there are sunglasses and other ones, there's hair. So uh, you basically need to layer all of your files on top of each other. Crunchy Cow's got a little bit complicated. I would simplify things and make put the head on top of all layers, except for unless there's hands in the way, or hands in the front, and then those hands will lay over the head, uh, uh, head element. So that's the breakdown of the Crunchy Cow. Let me show you the parts. I keep everything in folders like this, but you could just keep it in one PNG folder. Here are all of my background layers, and I keep them in common, rare, super rare, and uncommon folders. This way, when I upload them to NFT Generator, I know what percentages to set them at. Um, I don't do it absolutely perfect in NFT Generator. I'll eat common will be about 65%, and then I'll break down the other items, uh, uncommon being 2%, super rare being 8%, but you'll see in this video, it's gonna change a little bit. It's, that's not right on. So. Let's dive right in. Um, go to nft-generator.art, and some people have been telling me that this URL doesn't work perfectly, so what you're gonna wanna do is Google NFT art generator or NFT generator art with spaces in between, and then on Google, go to that link. Um, somebody created this and sent me this link. I, I do, I'm not a developer on this site or anything, um, but I do chat with the developer and send him feedback, and we go back and forth to try to improve it. So the, let's go through the interface really quick. On the left-hand side, this is the layers. This is where all of your groups of layers are gonna be. You're gonna upload all of your backgrounds to this one group layer, and then let's do um, color for the next one, spots, hair, horns, eyes, eyebrows, nose, mouth, uh, nose ring, uh, earrings, what else do we have? Um, eyewear, and let's see. I have already created Crunchy Cows, and you can see on the right-hand side of my screen, I have a screenshot of the order of all of the artwork as a reference. As I'm going, I'm always screenshotting the order, because I, I was, with Crunchy Cows, I was constantly testing which layer needed to be added on top of the other and shifting them around to make sure it worked. All right, we are back. You can see I have all of my grouped layers set up. This is my background and then the color of the cow and then spots and then the horns and then the eyes and the eyebrows. It was tricky with crunchy cows because the horns needed to lay behind uh, the color of the cow. Let me show you how I ended up drawing these so there was no overlapping. There's, there's more simple ways to do this, which I'd probably recommend. See how I, I created this empty space around the horns, so it really didn't matter if the horns are in the back of the character or in the front of the character, they're going to uh, be out of the way. And also, one thing to note that all of your artwork creating the NFT, or working in the NFT generator needs to be the same size. So all of the horn layers are 3,000 by 3,000 at 300 DPI, all of the, the, the hair is at 3,000 by 3,000. All of the nose is at 3,000. And you want to keep this alpha channel all the same around your character. So when you layer it on top of each other, let me give you an example here. All of your files are square and they just lay right on top of each other. And you don't need to do any positioning or guess the coordinates of your artwork. So keep it simple. Keep all of the artwork the same exact size. You can do that by exporting out of Procreate or opening your Procreate files in Photoshop and exporting as PNGs. <clears throat> all right, now that we have all the layer groups set up, let's drag and drop some of these items into place. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna grab 
my common backgrounds. When you drag and drop everything, it's all gonna be the same percentages. Now let's talk about the uh, cumulative percentages of what is gonna be shown um, after you generate the code. So notice in the items group section, there's this 100%. That means background layers are gonna be shown 100% of the time if I choose that. Here's the rarity for that grouped item. So you can change that. You can see when I slide this down, that percentage change here, changes here. You can also see the amount of um, items I have in this group. So I want backgrounds to show 100% of the time. When I drag all these items in, they're all evenly balanced at 4.2%. Let's drag in some, I'm not gonna do all of the common rare, but I will do, let's drag in some, a few stripes. You'll notice these are, everything changes to 3.7, but I'm gonna change, I'm gonna click on each one of these items and I'm gonna make, set this to be, um, to show very rarely. So it doesn't give you a percentage here in the slider, but it will change it, the percentage right here. So you can see these are gonna show up very rarely. These are gonna be common. I'm not gonna go through and do all of my common, uncommon. I already have those generated, but you can get the idea that <clears throat> the items, gr the group items, you can choose how often you want it to show. I want background to show 100% of the time, color to show 100% of the time, but spots, I really only wanna show 40% of the time. So when I drag those in, I don't want spots on every single cow. I just want it 40% uh, of the time. So I'm gonna change that. I'm also gonna do that with horns, but eyes are gonna have 100%, eyebrows, I don't need to go through it. I think you get the point. So let me dro drop in some color of the cows. I'm actually gonna drop all of these in. They'll all be evenly balanced here. And I'm going to set these three to be rare and I'll make these four uh, very rare. For very rare, I just keep it below 2%. I'm not absolutely perfect on all of my percentages. I don't think you need to be if you have a ton of items. Um, I think as long as the, the difference between the percentages is great enough, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I'm between zero and 2% for super rare, around 8% for rare, and then you can do the breakdown between common and uncommon um, using 65% for common. I'm not gonna do math on this video. I know that's a very easy equation, but don't ask an artist to do math problems. All right, let's, um, so now we have the background and color set up. I'm gonna go through and upload all of these other items and I'll see you back in a little bit. I have all of the items uploaded to each group, folder, layer, whatever you want to call it. I have all my background, my colors, my spots, my horns, my eyes, my eyebrows. They're all set up. I've gone through and I've changed the rarity of each group item or items of groups of items. Let's call them groups of items and within those groups, those will be items. So you can see earrings, I have them all equally set, but they will only be shown 24% of the time. After this is done, you want to create, make sure you type in your the collection size that you want to have. Crunchy cows is gonna be 9,999 cows. I want to name it. Uh, 9,999 cows. I forget what I what I, my description was. Uh, chowing down on the Ethereum blockchain. So this, this description is very important. It's gonna be linked to each one of your NFTs. So make sure you double check the spelling on this. I spell everything incorrectly. Um, let me show you, I probably spelled something wrong here. No, nope, I'm actually good. Blockchain may be two words, but it's let's go with one. All right, we got the name, the description, the collection size, and this dimension is automatically set by the artwork that you upload. If that is off, NFT generator will tell you that the artwork is off and you need to re-upload it. So. We're good to go, I have my rarity set. If you wanna jump in each um, group of items and click on the item and you can change the rarity of each one of those, go through and do that. But I'm ready to preview my collection. The way NFT generator works is you can 
let's see, you can preview and download 100 for free. These will be watermarked images that um, get generated and download a zip file to you. What I like to do is just preview these over and over. I hit this preview button and then a crunchy cow will show up here. And I do that over and over to test. I try to test it around 20, 30 times within the generator before I download the 100 free items. After you download the 100 free, you can see the pricing here for 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. I think if you go to a developer, you're gonna find that you're probably gonna be paying a similar amount of money. If somebody finds a cheap finds it cheaper, post it in the comments here. I think these are reasonably, reasonably priced. Um, yeah, but let me know what you think. I, I'm not the developer on this site. I think that feedback would be good for him to hear also if you think this is a good price. So um, let's start previewing these items. It's very, very simple from here on out. You just hit the preview button and you get a crunchy cow. Let me close this. Let me close this drop down. Oh, we're getting a little buggy here. Whoops. No, no, no. There we go. And you can scale that up. So you get a watermark. I know that these layers are pretty good uh, because I've already generated these cows, but I'm gonna preview through because I may have a couple of layers. This may be an old, an old ordering of layers that I'm gonna try to find a problem to show you that um, what I went through with crunchy cows so you can avoid this layering problem. If it's perfect, then we'll call it perfect, but I'm gonna try to find, see, you can see the nose ring. I didn't want the mouth to overlap with the nose ring here. I had that problem I had to fix. <clears throat> this mouth was overlapping the eyes, but you could see the eyes under the mouth. So I went through some of the mouths and I filled it in with white, just to try and make it look, uh, figuring cows might have like white around their mouths regardless of their color. It looks a little off uh, to some people, but I figured it was the best way to cover up the item underneath the mouth. So had to make some adjustments like that. It's not absolutely perfect, but I think it adds to the charm when you have problems and you think of, you know, simple ways to fix it. And even if it doesn't look perfectly, I still sort of like it. So I'm gonna preview a few more of these. So I have eyewear on some of them. A big problem I had was with the neckwear. I had to figure out how to get a necklace around this neck without the clothing overlapping it and without the, um, the food being in the way. So I had to spread some of the food out. Um, if the cows have two hands, I had to spread some of the food out to make the neckwear visible. Yeah, so this layer, this, uh, this layering of the groups looks pretty good. I had earrings that were getting in the way, the glasses, I had to bump those out. See, here's an example of the neckwear with the food being in the way of the neckwear. I had to bump it up on the neck and then shift the food down. So if your character is pretty complicated, I would try to think these things through in Procreate or on paper. And you could sort of make guides, horizontal guides along your character and make sure that, you know, the hair won't overlap with the eyewear. The eyewear won't overlap with the nose. The nose won't overlap with the mouth. With the mouth. The mouth won't overlap with the neck, the neckwear, whatever you want, however, you want to you want to create it. Uh, just make sure that you figure out the uh, the layering of the items before you get into NFT generator as much as possible. But the great thing about NFT generator is you can preview your items, so you don't have to pay anything or download any files, and you can work out problems, go back and re-upload the PNG files. So there's not a big problem uh, when you go to generate your collection. Yeah, so you're probably bored with me previewing crunchy cows. Here's uh, a problem with the mouth overlapping the necklace. I had to fi fix that and figure that out. And you can see there's white in the mouth here uh, around the chin of the uh, chin of the mouth. So <clears throat> that part covers up any coloring of the cows. And that's that was my solution to um, seeing transparency through the, the black line of the mouth here. I'm gonna preview two more, try to find any problems. This is an example, I had to bump the cereal and the hand over to the right and the left in case any necklace or clothing was in there so you could clearly see it. Uh, you can just see the nibs, of the uh, the horn nibs here. Um, I left it in 
it you know you probably I probably could have extended this a little bit but I'm I'm sort of fine with it um, letting people sort of look at all the details of the cow try to figure out what what rarities they have all right so that's it that's the that's pretty much everything you need to know about NFT generator I will um, let me generate a hundred cows here so I can show you So click on uh, 100 generative art, You'll, it'll jump up, but then you wanna hit the main part of the button. Let me type in my email address here, and it's generating the cows right now. Usually takes a minute. It's creating a zip file right now. Sorry for my camera being all over the place. Just download your zip file. Pop it open, you'll see you get an assets folder and you get a metadata folder. These are all the JSON fo files that will be connected to each one of your NFTs and then you get a metadata file here with all the information and the rarities. So let's take a look at the assets first. These are looking pretty good. Wait, let's see any overlapping issues. I had a lot of issues with this smoke over the eyewear. These, the snorkel is part of the eyewear and the smoke was going underneath the, uh, the snorkel. So I had to figure out how to relayer that. Um, so I put all the nose, the, uh, the smoke is part of the nose rings and I put that on top of everything. All right, these are looking pretty good. Let me show you one thing with the metadata. I had a, I had to go through and retouch little parts of all the artwork hand by hand. I probably did thousands of retouches, but then I re realized it's better to go back and regenerate, rebuild your character, regenerate it. And one of the ways that um, when I was touching up all the items, if I found an error on say the blue sunglasses and I needed to know all the images with the blue sunglasses, I would open up the metadata file with uh, that sounded weird. Metadata file with this Dadroid JSON viewer. I just Googled this. There we go. So this is going to let you quickly search through all of your metadata. So there's my eyewear shades blue. I just typed in blue. Um, once I have that, I can copy or I can just do I wear shades blue. It's gonna tell me that there are two of these and then I can jump between these two and edit those by hand if I needed to. I don't recommend editing things by hand because it's gonna be a never ending wormhole. You're gonna to need to go down to fix everything. I would edit your one item, go back and upload it to NFT generator, test it again, download your 100 items again, and then generate your entire collection. So that is gonna bring us to the end of this video. Let me know in the comments if you like this, if you wanna see more tutorials like that, like this, I will uh, create them. And um, let me know in the comments questions, DM me on Instagram at rymaloney, or find me on TikTok at ryryart. And I don't know when you'll be watching this, but hopefully Crunchy Cows will be out in uh, on OpenSea or on crunchycows.com. Thanks for watching.